just bring us up to date, Chris, if you will, uh, about what's happened over the last few weeks and what position you're in now. OK, well, probably from the last time I was in here, uh, we lost our third consecutive grand final, unfortunately, so missed out on promotion again. Um, but we also had a, a winding up order from the Inland Revenue, um, which um, in the interim period, our previous owner had made clear he wanted to sell his shareholding in the club and uh, fortunately was able to do a deal in time to not only conclude that transfer of the shareholding but also give me sufficient time to pay off that winding up order. Yes, I mean, you have been pretty... You won't, it's not any comfortable situation to be in, but you have pretty much been responsible for saving that club. It's uh, a lot of great risks to yourself as well, but it really it's a special place, this rugby league club, for you, but also really it should be for the, the town of Oldham because in the heydays of the 80s it was fantastic. Kyle Eastman, I noticed, the England rugby league player, they've produced a lot of talent. They're still doing it in the area. Yeah, Oldham is traditionally described as a hotbed of rugby league and that still is the case. As you said there, you know, there's still the likes of, of Kyle Eastman and Kevin Simfield, uh, both of whom played in the, the Four Nations final recently and are playing at top clubs in the game in Super League in uh, St Helens and, and Leeds Rhinos. And there's plenty of, of other players like Chris Bridge, for example, uh, at Warrington and, and throughout the game uh, who've all come from Oldham. Why is it struggling? You've got a great passion for it. I'm, I presume a lot of people in Oldham do. Why is it struggling? What's the problem? Uh, well, I think one of the major problems is that, that we haven't got our own ground. Um, and whilst that doesn't obviously directly affect what you do on the pitch, what it does is provide a base, it provides something that the fans can have an affinity to in, in a real fashion rather than just the team. It uh, opens up all kinds of fundraising streams for you, um, not only on the match day but also seven days a week in terms of uh, community activities. And, and that's the key to, to hopefully securing our future. OK, well, bring us up to date with the ground issue. That's a big problem because... Well, you need to know now because you're preparing now for the new season. You've got renewed hope for the new season, but you need a ground. I think the Oldham Chronicle, I was reading one of the local newspapers, that the council seem to think, suggest, that maybe they've, they've come up with somewhere for you um, to play. Well, we, we approached the council um, a few weeks ago now because um, we'd been told that we wouldn't be able to use Boundary Park, which has been our home for the last few seasons. Um, the, the manager there, Dave Penny, doesn't want anything other than football played on the pitch. So there is no other base as it stands in the town at the moment where we can play professional rugby league. And one of the problems that we've had throughout the 12 years since the, the club was reformed is the fact that we've been nomadic and we've had to play full seasons on occasions outside of the borough. And as I said before, you know, that means that we've incurred losses. So we approached the council with an impassioned plea to, to try and help us... Um, to get ourselves a base within the town. We have come up with a, um, a potential site and, and the council are looking at that with us. And quickly, just a quick word on what happens from here. How do you see it all resolving? Uh, hopefully, Alden will be playing in the borough starting from next season. OK, Chris, I wish you all the success with it. It's non-stop for you. You've tried your hardest and you're still encountering problems. Chris Hamilton uh, from Alden Rugby Lethal, thanks for coming in.